to mid term you want it on wednesday oh no. preferably or yeah. tuesday The following month, not the following month. Oh, okay. <laughs> Next Wednesday. Next week. For what? Um, next week. Yeah. Next Wednesday. Because that's when midterms are scheduled. Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday or Tuesday? Tuesday and Wednesday are the the two days for midterms, and those are scheduled. In the oh, uh, because I just want to give you one more extra day. Last time what happened was it was scheduled for Tuesday, but you asked for Wednesday. Remember? So, so not this Wednesday. So Tuesday or Wednesday? Two options, Kenneth. Hmm. Huh? I'll put out a homework today. I'll put out a homework today, and I'll have you give you some guidelines as to what will be in the exam as well. Okay. Wednesday is fine. Yes, sir. Yeah. You don't want it Tuesday, right? No. Wednesday is fine. Perfect. Sure. Wednesday. Yes. No, same, same. Same. Right. When September starts, yeah. or tenth of October. Yeah. 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 beginning to the so I have talked to you Wednesday or it's okay but it's specifically what's going to be on test I'll give you an idea most of the material will be what we have covered since our first test okay. but there will be like maybe one or two problems from the first portion of the exam is that okay so, so this question we have we have we have access to that you have two tests midterm final four tests four exams first test is done you we'll have one more test we have midterm okay have fine okay this another you did it four exams four exams tests slash tests can we get this very on my side so it's on the syllabus i know I'll, I'll 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 send you I'll give you your grades, including the homework grades one two, and put put all all of on black all of that on black. Here here is the thing. Okay. Assignment one will be your formula sheet for exam. Final midterm exam. So think about what you want to write in there. Assignment zero. That's what I'm saying. Formula sheet. Formula sheet. Okay. Okay. So whatever we put on assignment zero, we can turn that into anything, and then we also have our own copy for this term. You can have. You can use that as your formula sheet. Okay. So we just turn that in with our midterm. You can turn that in with your midterm. I'm going to check. You have to show me assignment zero. What it is? Okay. You cannot have examples on assignment zero. It's formula. Okay. So typically, what happens is if you just summarize it, I think what you guys do is uh, you just do it for the sake of getting points. It has to be useful. It is actually the foundation. Okay. So what you are going to do is. Write your assignment zero such that you can use it in your midterm. But how about this? It's not going to be helpful. It's not going to be helpful. It will be helpful. He's not lying about what he has to do with assignment zero. 
Okay. All right. So for let's start with today's lecture, and I'll tell you why. What I'll be mostly looking at for midterm. I'll be giving you at least. <coughs> Yes. Yes. <coughs> okay. So we have established that orbit types are four, right? Four conic sections. Now pay attention to these. These could be your one point. Just think in your true false or a statement in your midterm. Okay. So the first association is circle. Now keep in mind, I gave you this already. Very very useful, very critical. What is the orbit equation? R is equal to a square over mu 1 plus e cosine theta. Right? If here, if e is equal to 0, R would be circle. R will define the trajectory of a circle. Is that okay? What does that say? Hmm? It says R. R. The subscript circle. C I R C. E. R will be. R. Else, right? E equal to 1. R will be R parabola. Okay. And E greater than 1, R will be R. So this would be very easily be a 1, 2, 3 point question. Okay. Now let's look at some of the things we have derived. Okay. What is R circle? Tell me the formula. Like for a regular circle? Like, oh, um, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. Look up there. <laughs> Tell me the formula. Oh, easy. Yes. Huh? It's good. It's going to be the uh, A square. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's what I'm asking. Oh, how about you want to like that was a great form, man. What is this? This is Latin. The mu? No, I'm just kidding. He's asking if it makes sense. Oh. <laughs> nah. You want algebra, right? No. You said you wanted algebra no, form, right? No, that was one in the algebra. So what is this? That's uh, that's algebra form. What you mean? Oh, just like the definition of a circle, you know? So is that algebra form? I mean, definition. I guess, I guess no, there's no, no. multiple ways. Right, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I said it's only just like sorry. Orbit types are four, four conic sections. Those are the four conic sections. Okay. So this is your R circle. Make sense? Very simple. Right? Now Thank you. 
Now think about this. What is your definition? So recall, what is H? Or right. Right. This is also you can write this as R cross V. Right? This is V, right? If you think about this, H would be R V sine theta. <coughs> and this is R plus V This you know, right? We have established this. Correct? Okay? Sorry. Okay. If you have So this is where your central body is. What is this vector? R. What is this vector? V. You got it? You with me? Now this V vector, there will be two components to this. This component, which is the radial component, this component, which is the tangential component or perpendicular component to R. You still with me? If I take this cross, which vector, which component will contribute to H? What is R cross VR? So just V, right? Now R cross with VR, let's say. Zero. It will be zero. It will be zero. You know why? Right. So if you look at what is this? So if you look at this, this is R V sine theta. Okay. You got it? And this will be H direction. Now, you can split this up as R V R sine theta plus R V perpendicular sine theta H. What is this component? Zero, right? Because if you look at what is the angle between R and VR, it is the same line. It's the same line. So this co this component does not contribute to the angular moment. Got it? So your H, what is sine theta here? Right. The angle between these two is 90 degrees, so this would be 1. one. Okay. So your H, which is which can be written as H is equal to R V
Okay? Does this make sense? The magnitude of R, only the tangential component will contribute to the magnitude of the uh, specific angular momentum. Okay? So if you write this, The circular orbit, we are discussing circular orbits, okay? The first is E is equal to zero. Okay. Your R or H is simply R V or V is equal to H over R and then this is equal to H into square root of Square R over Q. And this is one over R. You with me? No. B, if you're, you're with me, right? Yeah. This is B, B is equal to from this, B is equal to H over R. I've just split 1 over R, taken 1 over R, H is, is R over R. Okay, this is going to be R times mu. R times mu. Square root of R times mu. Right? Right. Now, we, now you're with me? This implies h square is equal to r mu or h is equal to square root of r mu. Right? So why are you putting everything in terms of r and mu? Right, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that, okay? So if you look at this, if I substitute, you're going to get that. And if I take this, You want to get mu over r, okay? And if I add the subscript circular, 
T is the time period of the orbit, of the circular orbit. How do you express the time period of the circular orbit? Does this make sense? Oh, yeah. It makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. What is the circumference? It's Right? Divided by? So this can be written as 2 pi root of R over. Okay. Yes. Sorry. It is. Does that make sense? I need to tell you something. So, T is equal to 2 pi over. You with me? What do you know about this? Constant? Can I write T proportional to R3 over 2 or T square is proportional to R cube? Okay. <clears throat> what is this? This is Kepler's third law. The square of the time period is proportional to the cube of the mean distance. Okay. So that's the reason I wanted you to. Okay. Specific energy. What is the definition for specific mechanical energy? Shall I raise this? You are done with this? It doesn't cover the... It will be on YouTube. What is the specific mechanical energy formula we derive? Mecha total mechanical energy. Visvio equation. Visvio equation was? Uh, 
epsilon is equal to you're right v square over 2 minus u mu over r okay what is v what is v square Minus this is what's the what's the this equation? Energy equation. Okay. This is a total mechanical energy equation, okay? And this invites a very interesting discussion. What do you know about this energy? Okay, just like this is similar to E. What, what this means is, if your energy in the orbit is negative, the orbiting body cannot escape the gravitational pull. You understand? If the energy of an orbiting body is negative, it cannot escape. You understand? Escape the orbital pull. If it is zero, it will escape, but it will not have enough energy to move on. You understand? This is a parabolic orbit. This is a lost in space orbit. If you have zero energy, it's like you escape, you get out of the orbit, but you cannot move further and go into another orbit. You are lying in between, you are stuck in between, you are stuck in space. If you have positive energy, which is a hyperbolic orbit, you have enough energy to escape and still keep on going. This would be a flyby. If you fly, if you do it flyby with this, what will happen? You will escape but you will get stuck. Let's say you are going to moon. What is the flyby you are going to do? Or you are uh, not moon, but let's say you are going to do, go to Mars. What is the flyby you are going to do? Or let's say you are going to go to some further planet. Huh? Yeah, so if you are you're going to go around one of the planets in between and do a flyby. Alright? If you are, when you are doing the flyby, if you, if you do it in this orbit, or if you don't have energy, uh, enough energy in that orbit or in that body, you'll be stuck in a parabolic orbit. You cannot go further. What is a flyby, first of all? Does flyby use any fuel? What does it use? It uses the gravitational pull. Right? So the gravitation, when you do this, when you're using, you have to be able to pull, okay? So it's like, think about this, uh, uh, the, the rotating thing where you, where you stand and somebody is rotating, what is that thing? The 
rotating the merry go on the on the ground, right? If you are rotating it really fast, and let's say you jump in it, or you try to jump in, what happens? It will push you, right? It will give you that that uh, push, and you you'll be thrown away. That's what is happening. Okay. The faster you approach, the faster you'll be, the further you'll be thrown away and you'll escape and keep moving. <laughs> but if you don't approach that thing with enough speed. So what, what, is, what would that look like? So it's like you're chasing, 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 you're never really catching up with the front person. Neither are you falling back. You are just, the relative distance ceases. You will never get there. You understand? If you want to get there, somebody has to push you so hard that you go past that the front, person in front. So would that be like the same kind of effect as if there was no gravitational pull at all? Is that the same kind of we cannot, we cannot imagine a world where there is no gravity. We just don't know that, how, how that world exists. Okay? Everywhere, anywhere you go in the universe, at least in the Newtonian physics, gravity is there. We don't know what, what it is like to not have it. Even in space, space station, there is there no gravity? It's gravity. There is still a gravity. Huh? Yeah, it's it's not that significant. So think about these and compare these to E values. Okay, what is E value here? Zero to one. E value here is not E. This is epsilon, guys. E E value. This is not E. I talked about the eccentricity. Eccentricity. Oh, oh, oh. E is zero. Okay, E value here is between zero and one. This, these are what are closed orbits? Uh, circle. circle and elliptical. Okay. These, this is these two are open orbits. All right. So this is E is equal to one. E is greater than one. All right. So always keep this in mind. Now, we will get started with the elliptical orbit. What I need you to do is understand this elliptical orbit. How to draw it? You will be asked to draw an elliptical orbit and name various orbital parameters. How do we draw an ellipse? Do you want to practice? Do you want to give me a perfect ellipse in exam? No. Uh, <laughs> extra point. <laughs> Here is the thing, okay? If you bring a protractor, not a protractor, you cannot draw it with a protractor. It's a divider. So compasses, one have compass ha on one hand of a compass you have. A pencil and the other end is a needle. A divider, both these both the things are needles. It divides. Okay. So you bring a divider or a compass. You bring a string, you draw a perfect ellipse. Those two points will be two. Uh, uh, <laughs> Four side. You get it? Do we do it like a less cute way? So if you're going to draw an ellipse, <laughs> I'll give you an option, okay? If you draw me an ellipse, so these two are the points. 
What you're going to do is you're going to keep your divider or your compass here. Bring the string. Oh, wow. So those two points will be marked as guys, cell phones. Keep your cell phones away. Keep your computers away. This point is so now we are discussing elliptical orbit. What is E here? Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. What is E? Epsilon? Epsilon is equal to zero. Oh, zero? Oh, yeah. Equal to zero is zero. That's better. Yeah. That's better. Right. 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 So this is what is here. F is occupied focus. Okay. What is F star? Unoccupied. So is that what we should draw on the test? This is where you start. Where what? You will start. You have to start here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's discuss it. I'm, I'm just giving an option. We'll, we'll talk about it. Okay. So these two are what is happening here? What is this trajectory? What is this path? Yeah. This is the central body. F is where the central body is. Okay. This trajectory is the orbiting body. This is what the orbiting body is going to do. It's going to keep going around in that path. Okay. So let's say the orbiting body is here. What is this? Or vector R or the position vector. Okay. What is this? Velocity. Okay. This point is called the peri axis. What is what do you know about this point? Peri axis. It's a point of closest approach. Okay. What is this point? Apo axis. This is the point of Pons. Apo, mm -hmm. APO axis, mm -hmm. APSIS. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is this line? <laughs> At least give me the geometric, geometrical. Major axis. Right. It's not the central axis. What do you mean central axis? How many central axes are there? What are, how many central axes do you think are there? <laughs> there are infinite central axes. Yeah. You can everything anything that passes through the central line is a central axis, right? How many central lines can you draw? You can do one, two, three, four, all are central axes. They're passing through the center. Why is this a major axis? Why is there only one major axis? Because there's a point between the these two distances is the largest distance. Okay? So this is this is the center. See, this distance is the is called A. What is A? What could A be? Semi-major axis. Okay. This distance what is this distance? Anybody? Huh? Semi-minor axis. This 
this is represented by B. Okay. What is this axis? Minor axis. Okay. C is the center. So, so, hmm. Is it the same major axis from the F web to the center as well? So it's it's this is also semi-major axis. Okay. This is also semi-major axis. Uh -huh. This is semi-minor axis. This, this is semi-minor. Semi, semi is yeah. half. Right? This is the apse line. The major axis is the apse line. Why so? Joins the apsis. It joins the two apsis. Okay. Don't make fun. All right. I need you to understand. And don't be, don't be surprised or don't act that like this is the first time you are hearing this. You should not do that. This you you know this as major axis. You have not heard of ellipsis at all until now. You have not heard of ellipsis. You have not heard of major axis, you have not been taught major axis, minor axis of an ellipse. Right, so you know what an ellipse is, right? Yeah. You should not be surprised saying, oh, is this major axis? Come on, it's can how many how many central axes are there in, in, in any circle or ellipse? In finite. That should not be a surprise to you. So, on the test you would just say, draw... Right, I'm going to ask you to draw these. Okay. So, draw this and then we've got to put in everything. Right, exactly. So, this distance denoted by Ra and this distance is denoted by Rp. Okay. How do you spell it? Uh, is it A P S E? A P S E, absolute. Apsis is peri apsis, A P S I S. Okay. This is plural for apsis. Apsis, plural for apsis. This is the absolute. Right. Got it? What do you know about this distance? Rp. I'm going to call it periapsis radius. Or, and this is apoapsis radius. Can you tell me something about RP? It is the shortest. Does that make sense? It is the shortest distance. If you do this, if you take any distance, right? This is where the central body is. This is the shortest. Okay, and this is the farthest. Axis is the is a point. This is a distance. This is a distance. Okay. What do you know about RP plus RA? This is a Right? What do I write here? Okay. Does that make sense? A is half, right? Oh. Full is 2A. So RP plus RA has to be 2A. So what, what's the two P's for here? This P is periaxis point. Oh, it's just a point. And this is A. Sorry, I'm sorry. This is A, point A. These are points, aquas. Mind you, mind you, stay in the line for A and B going down. 
this is. Oh, you, you, I'm saying so you only did that to show our A and R three. Right. Yeah, well, okay. right. Okay. So look up figure two point one eight, please. 